Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Tammy. How are you? Good morning, Tammy. Hello. I just call into um, our freedom actually starts with voting on Tuesday because we may not be able to heat with coal or some of our wood items if people don't go out and vote. So mm -hmm. I'm just calling to tell them to do that. And also, if you're in the Steel Creek area, that your polling place has been changed to Door Hope. But also, if you can't find your polling place, you can actually vote anywhere that it says to vote here. How, so I was just curious what uh, you guys believe in Pop 2 and whether or not it's a good idea or bad. I uh, am against Prop 2, absolutely against it. And uh, I've been actually looking back in history to see if I can find anything relevant to it. And I would encourage people to read... Uh, Federalist Paper Number 10. I know that sounds really boring, and I'm not going to read it right now, but it gives a good example of what we're seeing right now with a group trying to impose their will on other people, other citizens. Even it, it's written by James Madison, and he goes through not just a large group or a small minority going against a large group, and he talks about a large majority um, taking the rights of a small minority. And what's wrong with that and how our system of government is supposed to, I mean, he was writing what his feelings were of the Constitution, was to protect the one person, the minority. That is what our government should be worried about, not taking away our rights, but protecting even the single individual. Well, it's and the other side is saying that we're only going to take out those who are, are polluting, and that is not true. Anybody who has an outdoor boiler, unless it's pellet, is going away. They they become lawbreakers because of a few people. And it's pretty obvious with the science, at least. I went out to North Pole. I would like to get a coal burner. Those things are awesome. North Pole Gravel Products has one on display. And those things are more efficient than the pellet burners. Absolutely. I mean, this, thing's, this thing is uh, it's hypocritical at, at best because, on the one hand, the same people talk constantly about the need for affordable, clean energy, affordable energy, affordable energy. People are leaving, and they're not moving here because they can't afford energy. And, by the way, we're going to take one of the most efficient forms of energy and the cheapest one that you can find, wood and coal. It's and hypocritical. It takes, you know, and we, well, not just that. You know, Do you want to be dependent on oil for the rest of our lives? We keep talking about you know, how we're being taken, we're being scammed. Well, let's get off of it. And let's use a renewable resource that it's up to us to get out there and work and bring the wood home versus sitting back and seeing how high the prices may go. Well, the key to getting off oil, though, isn't in the wood. It's definitely in the coal, and not necessarily in just in burning coal itself or powering power plants with coal, but in the fact that you can turn coal into synthetic oil, which is actually worth a lot more than regular oil. And the science behind synthetic oil is so much cheaper than it used to be. If we started uh, grabbing all our soft coal, which isn't the best in the world for burning anyway, and started converting it to synthetic oils, we could put a big, huge dent in the market. Well, not to mention, um, do we really think they're going to stop with the coal burners? And fuel is going to be next. Well, you'll think Guaranteed. about it. Yeah, this Oil's is going this, this is nice. really not about air quality. This is about jobs. Where did this push for the new air for the new air standards come from? Uh, you look at that the, the, the hmm. timeline here. You know, we had we got rid of the IM program because our air quality had improved so much. Does everybody forget that? We and got rid of the air because our air quality had improved so much. Now all of a sudden they've got tighter rules, and every single person that works for the IM program is still employed at the borough. They've just been shifted over to this new air quality division, where now they're they're looking for something else that they can come out and and check up on and have people have a job for. It. I, I'm, I'm getting really, really tired of having my property taxes going to go and pay for somebody else's make-work job. Well, it's back to technology, too. We forgot technology got us, out of, got us out of the CO problem, not the regulations. You know, not us taking our cars in every two years. It was technology, and, and that's what you guys just brought up, even with the, the coal. I mean, it's changing technology is going to get us the energy that we need here, and why on earth? You know, would we regulate that? And it drives me crazy that two things have happened in the last couple of weeks. One, you had the university say that they're going to take care of their power plant. And what are they going to put in? Coal, because that's what they can <laughs> afford to do. You know, which is, that's front page news. And then the second one, and this is the worst, why on earth in interior Alaska would we find ourselves add more regulation and wood cops 
because we believe if we don't do it to ourselves, the federal government will. Really? Oh, you know, I... why are we not pushing back and saying, no, we're not? Exactly. Even though the benevolent Mr. Uh, um, Hopkins did say that he really didn't see any enforcement happening, even though he has some you know, officers waiting in the wings, I doubt that it will put them into enforcement, which, which is baloney. We know they will. This whole oh, thing, absolutely. if you want the market to take care of things, if you ban something, well, who's going to come up with something better for it? No one will. I mean, if we really want to get cleaner air, we would promote the coal burners, for one, and people would see, hmm, I mean, it comes, we've actually heard it in some of the forums. They said, well, all that's going to do is people are just going to make up solutions so they can make money, and that's not right. Well, no, that's how everything works. If someone can make money, if they're looking at this issue and say, wow, I can make money not by banning something, not by putting, by forcing people to take this away, which the only money that comes from that is the government. By I don't force, to get the money. I mean, from taxes. But if someone, well, if someone sees an opportunity, I can make a better product here, and here's a need for that product, they will. And the, pro the, product, the technology will get better and better and better. I mean, would we have an industrial revolution? Would we have anything now if they had regulations like they're wanting to do now? No, because there wouldn't be any money to be made in the first place. And unfortunately, I think it's fortunately, Money talks, and if you can have an incentive for someone to make something better, they will. If it's already banned, they won't, and we'll just go deeper and deeper and deeper into being controlled by oil. Yeah, but we have we have a perfect example of a state that has lifted regulation, and people are coming from all over America and going to that state. And it's a state that nobody's ever wanted to live in before. Mm. North, North Dakota. Dakota. <laughs> North Dakota has one of the lowest populations in America and is doubling in size all over what? Because they found oil? No. They already had it. Oil's been there. They deregulated. They told the EPA to get lost. Yay! <laughs> what they did was... Wait, wait, wait. The federal government didn't send in troops? Apparently not. They didn't They didn't freeze all their federal funds and penalize them and, and make them pay money? It's in the wings. Oh, yeah. They're going to penalize... Okay. Yeah. But wait, how much money are they making? Lots. From all of the businesses coming in. So it, do you think it's going to offset the lots of money that they have to pay to the EPA? Let's look at the cold weather housing research, whoever they are, the CCHRC or something like that. They said that we spend in the interior upwards of $300 million more than we need to <coughs> for heat and uh, energy, basically. $300 million bucks. I would say it's because of regulations. Now, I don't know the exact numbers, but I... I keep hearing people say, well, if we tell the EPA to get lost, then we'll lose these federal funds, upwards to $5 million. Okay, $5 million versus $300 million doesn't even add up at all. The only difference is the $5 million goes to the borough, and oh, the $300 million shazam. stays in our pockets. Back exactly. to the government. and Let them do with it as they feel instead of giving it to the people and let them do with it how they feel. Tammy, thanks so much for the phone call. Thank, Thank you. you. Four five eight talk is the number. This year we can squeeze in uh, one or two more here before we get to the news at the bottom of the hour. Good morning. Who's this? Yeah, is this me? It might be. Depends on who it is. Well, this is Bob. Bob, it is you. Oh, hey. Good morning. Good morning. I was uh, pretty happy to make it to your last year's strategic and critical mineral summit yesterday, and what they were talking about was how they could find a way, or how they had found, gotten a way for processing the heavy metals. And this would include the permanent magnet. And this resulted from uh, technology that was pretty intensive, but it was developed in the U.S. to get past the heavy metals, the radium, the gamma rays, and et cetera, and have it uh, clean, filtered, so that the, uh, uh, the, magnetic, the magnet that could turn into a permanent magnet motor generator would be developed in Alaska within 18 months. It was such a terrific presentation by this uh, uh, Jonathan Price and Jack Lifton, and they had the, it's it's so well understood that even I could understand it. Wait, are, are you are you like saying that there's technology right now that is being developed that could end up making more money? Done did done been there had got ready for the, with the t-shirt and the coffee mug and everything else. It's right here. It's right here in Alaska, and it can be done. Do they have a website? Uh, the website here, uh, 
I'm going to have to call you back on that. I'm not too familiar with that kind of uh, stuff, but it should be in one of these. Uh, what were they called again? We can probably figure. Yeah, we can Google them. What's uh, what's the name of the group? Elastic Strategic and Critical Mineral Summit. Oh, that was the summit that they held yesterday. So this oh. is an individual group that you're talking about that within that summit that has the technology. We'll right. uh, we'll yeah. see if we can look that up. Thank you very much. Yeah, Appreciate that. The way they got it there in China was they had to use 27 different chemicals, and they use a, a wash for it to develop it. And they get it get it done, but they leave that wash into the ocean, which is pretty pretty nasty stuff. We'll be right but back the after the news. Radio KFAR, the home of Fox News. <laughs> Fox News Ready to Go. I'm Pam Puso. The White House calling on Congress to take action on the president's $447 billion jobs bill. Pass the jobs bill, please. That was the message from President Obama in his weekly address. This isn't just about what I think is right. But Republicans aren't rushing to support the president's plan. Instead, they want to do battle against excessive government regulations. Fox Ready Go's Hank Weinblum. Rebels in Libya have the city of Sirt surrounded. They're hoping to push from the east and the west to root out loyalists to Muammar Gaddafi. Revolutionary fighters are tightening their grip on Gaddafi's hometown of Sirte. The commanders say that they've already captured the airport, the port, and also a military base. Fox's David Piper in Tripoli. Family and supporters of Troy Davis gathering in Georgia today to say goodbye. The convicted cop killer was executed last month. Davis maintaining his innocence until the end. Fox News, we report, you decide. Did you miss this week's Shooter's Corner? Archive shows for the last month online at KFAR660.com. This hour of programming is a joint venture paid for by Aaron Bennett for Burrow, 3015 Amanda Loop, North Pole, Alaska, 99705. It is also paid for by Joshua Bennett for Burrow, P.O. Box 58578, Fairbanks, Alaska, 99711. <laughs> And welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. I am Steve Floyd. Joining me in the studio today, we have Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical and Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. Gentlemen, thanks again for being here today. Uh, you ready to go back to the phones, or is there something else you wanted to say first? You ready. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning, Steve and Bennett Brothers. Hey, who is this? Mark. Hey, Mark. Good morning. Uh, gentlemen, I have a show-and-tell model that I built out of a mason jar and stainless steel in which I can combust water. I took it to the university and the governor's office, and, of course, because we're a British protectorate, EP Petroleum, <laughs> uh, fell upon deaf ears. But we do have the technology to burn cleanly. There's no carbon in the combustion process. It's H2H2O2. Yeah. How do we get it out amongst the people? That is the problem, isn't it? I guess with things like this, radio shows like this, um, I don't know. There's such a monopoly on it. It's uh, pretty overwhelming, to tell you the truth. But I, I believe it. I mean, I know I've seen the. Uh, I have a show on model, model more than willing to show anyone anywhere. I've taken it all over the state, everywhere I travel, the rides in the truck. Like I said, it's just a. Show and tell model to explain the technology and the physics of it all. Yeah, me and my brother made a, a hydrogen producer and actually got a working model and hooked it up to a vehicle and got way better it, fuel mileage off of it. It's the exact same technology you used in electrolyzer, didn't you? Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> all right, gentlemen, out here, peace be to this house. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Four five 